if we're looking for the wrong thing, we will miss it. But if we're looking for the right thing, we won't miss anything, will we? Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together today. I thank you for my family and how you have blessed us, Lord, your church, here in this place you gave us to worship in. And we, we thank you for it. We thank you for the way you have already spoken to us through the classes and through the fellowship with one another, through the worship time, and Lord, right now through your word. We ask God that we hear it, we hear it clearly, and we make a decision, a conscious choice to obey it. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody agreed and said amen. amen. So last week, raise your hand if you were not here last week. Raise your hand if you were not here last week. Okay. You missed something really, really special last week because God, um, there, was a, there was a move of His Spirit that was revival. Um, and it wasn't jumping and shouting and shouting hair down and snotting and carrying on. It was, uh, it was a brokenness. It was a healing. It was a breath of fresh air from His Spirit that led us to a place to continue on a little further in our walk where we would um, see the need to let go of things we don't need to be continuing to hang on to, right? And there's been a lot of good fruit come from this already uh, just since last Sunday, uh, and there's more to come, not just from His words to us and the move of his spirit and how he prodded and prompted us last Sunday, but also um, for today, there's a, there's, a, there's a continuing, there's a carrying over in the word that, that I'm going to be bringing to you that he was sharing with me last night and this morning um, that, um, that is going to help you to sustain the walk that you intended and set out to walk last week. How many of you chose last week, and there probably would be a lot of you, you chose last week to let something or somebody go. You chose to forgive. Look at the hands all over the place. There's, I mean, there's, there's more that did than, than said, didn't raise your hand, and either you were too shy to raise it, or maybe you were good. Maybe you were in a good place with the Lord uh, last Sunday, and you had recently forgiven. But let me just give you a clue. If you hadn't recently forgiven somebody for something, and I mean like in, in recent days, then you needed to. And maybe you just didn't. Um, we, we, have to, we have to look at it like um, we have to look at it like this. Forgiveness is not something that I do once in a lifetime or once a year or only when something major happens. Forgiveness is something that I have to do. When I go to get in line, the short line over there at Walmart, and I'm pushing my heavy buggy, and I see a short line, and somebody cuts me off, and, and they got a bigger buggy than I do, and they knew I was going for that spot, and they knew that they were having to hurry up to beat me there, well, I have to forgive even something as simple as that, right? Am I extreme? Am I crazy? No, because if I don't, if it's something as simple and as minor as that, and I don't make a conscious choice, Lord, I forgive that person. Lord, I forgive them. I truly, genuinely, from my heart, I, I, I'm just not going to hold anything against them. Maybe they're in a bigger hurry than me. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're just being whatever I thought originally that they were being. Um, but even so, even so, Lord, that's your business, not mine, to judge. And so I'm going to let it go. Because if I don't let such a small thing go, then there's going to be something else that's going to be added to that later on in the day and something else that's going to be added to it tomorrow and something a little bigger and a little bigger because the enemy is so sneaky, he's so sly, that he will gradually, gradually add to that feeling of unforgiveness and judgment that I have that I don't even notice that it's building. And one day I wake up and find myself this bitter, cynical, critical, angry, bent out of shape, hard to deal with, hard to put up with, hard to live with person. 
Now, there's nobody in this room that fits that bill, I'm sure, or at least I hope <laughs> after last week. Uh, but but my, what I'm saying to you is this has to continue, church. It has to continue. So one of the things I didn't spend a lot of time talking about last week is something that I want to focus on a little heavier and a little more this week, and, and that's what I said. It was going to help you to continue in this walk that we uh, some of you began last week. Some of you just continued last week. And that is uh, forgiving one of the hardest things and one of the hardest people uh, that there is to forgive. And uh, it's, it's not your mama. It's not your daddy, although they're very important. It's not God. It's not your neighbor. Guess who it is? It's you. It's you. And you will never, you will never, Get to the place where you want to be in God, where you have total peace and total confidence until you forgive you. Zig Ziglar said, we can't perform. Now, this is like living everyday life. Anybody know who Zig Ziglar is? You ever heard of Zig Ziglar? Motivational speaker, Christian man. He said, you can't perform in everyday life in a way that is inconsistent with the way you see yourself. Think about that. You can't perform in everyday life in a way that is inconsistent with the way you see yourself. In other words, if I see myself as a, uh, a, a person who is responsible for atrocities and I see my self as a person who is angry and I see myself as a person who is unworthy, who is unloved because I've done so much terrible, horrible things. Uh, if, if, you don't, if you don't know all that I've done and you don't know all the bad that I've committed, just ask me and I'll, I'll tell you or you could hang, ar hang around with me a little bit and I'll show you. I can perform a little while if I'm acting and if I want to put on a front and if I want to show something that is not true about me, I can act a little while. But eventually, the way I view myself is the way I am going to act in front of you and everybody else on a regular basis. So what am I talking about exactly, Brother Mark? I'm talking about do you view yourself as a person who is loved by God? Raise your hand in here this morning if you view yourself as a person that is extremely loved by God. I got almost half of everybody in here to raise their hand. That leaves 50% of you who don't see yourself that way. That's a little bit shocking, wouldn't you say, for Christian people that they don't see themselves as somebody who's extremely loved by God? Let, let me ask you another question. Do you view yourself as a person whose sins, though they were many, whose sins have been totally forgiven by the Father. Mm, that's fewer than we had just a minute ago. So that tells me that more than half of the church don't feel forgiven. Because we don't see ourselves that way. I see myself as guilty. I see myself as responsible. I see myself as the hurt the, the one who, who, who hurts or the one who offends or has offended. I, I see myself as a person who has to look down when he walks and kick the cans like Charlie Brown along the way. I see myself as the person who just don't measure up to everybody else. I'm just not as sharp as everybody else. I'm just not as smart as everybody else. I don't have to bring to the table the same things that everybody else can bring to the table. So I'm unworthy. And so I stay quiet and I stay silent and I stay retreated into my shell and, and, and I, I don't get out unless I'm pulled out and then I have to be pulled out. But what can change everything for you who were not able to raise your hand when I asked either of those questions, what can change everything is, is, is a, it's a matter of who you believe. It's a matter of what you're going to believe. I heard Jason give an example years ago when I believe it was Ariana might have been Keelan. 
was a little girl, and they brought home a picture that they had drawn. Am I get, is this right, Jason? And they said that it was ugly. I'm going to tell the story. Jason don't have a microphone. If I get it wrong, Jason, you'll have to straighten me out a little bit later on. But this is the gist of it. They drew a picture at school, and Jason saw the picture when they brought it home, and, and he says, man, that's, that's, a, that's a good picture. And, and the, they said, no, this is ugly. And he said, w- w- why, why would you say it's ugly? And they said, because my friends said it was ugly. She needed some new friends, apparently. But my friend said it was ugly. And Jason said, I think it's beautiful. Because Jason looked at her as his daughter with all the love of a father and and saw her with the potential that she had and and saw her that she was just at a very young, undeveloped stage. And this this picture was great for her and, and where she was in her stage in life. And he said, I say it's beautiful. He said, now you have a choice. Are you going to believe what they say? Or are you going to believe what your daddy says? And that's where I stand today. And that's where you stand today. I have a choice. You have a choice today. To have walked in here with your head down, thinking you don't measure up to everybody else. To have walked in here with the guilt that you have borne for weeks, months, in some cases, years. And I'm guilty, and I, 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 it was me, and I've, I've done it, and, and I'm labeled, and I might as well have this letter or this word or this sign on me that says I am the person that I think I am, that the enemy tells me I am, that unloving people tell me I am. And I've got a choice today to either continue believing those things, or to begin to believe what God says. Who are you going to believe? You're going to believe the friends. You're going to believe the ones that say you're incapable, the ones that say you're incompetent, the ones that say it was your fault. Are you going to believe them? Are you going to believe the lies that the enemy brings to your mind and to your heart on a daily basis and reinforces every opportunity he gets, and he looks for those opportunities. He he looks for those opportunities to make you feel less, to make you feel and think that you are rejected. And you can choose to believe those things, and you can continue believing them the rest of your life, and you will live a life you'll never be able to perform on the level of which God intended for you to perform. You will live less than that. You will live somewhere down below, somewhere in the shadows, somewhere with the castoffs, the castaways and the rejects because you chose to live there. Now, you didn't say, I want to be a reject the rest of my life. I want to I want to be a nothing. I want to be I want to be the biggest loser you've ever seen. Would you ever say that, Zoe? I want to be a loser. Can I get anybody to join the chant with me? Let's lose. Let's win. Uh, let's, let's don't win. I hate winning. Let's be a loser. Let's be hated. Let's be forgotten. Let's be rejected. Let our offerings be rejected. None of them accepted. Let people laugh and let them mock. And I want to endure that. Or would you rather want to believe what your daddy says? So you got a choice today. You got a choice. The 50% who raised your hand and said, I believe I'm forgiven. I believe I'm loved and I believe I'm accepted. I believe I measure up 50% of you roughly. And you got a choice to continue believing that. And the other 50%, you have a choice to come out from under the, the heap and the pile that the enemy has put you under. Because you chose to forgive, you chose to release, you chose to, be, to walk now in obedience to your heavenly Father. You chose to believe what He says. You chose last week, there were several of you that I saw, you made a choice last week. I choose to obey. I choose no longer to go by my feelings. 
I choose no longer to go by what I've been told and the lies that have been that have propped me up for years. I choose rather to obey. And if God says in order for me to be forgiven, I've got to forgive, then I forgive. If he says in order for me to be released, I've got to release, then I'm going to release. And I'm going to I'm going to live free as a result of it. I'm going to live an overcomer's life as a result of it. I'm going to live a life that's more than a conqueror as a result of it. How do I know this? Because that's what daddy said. That's what daddy said. How do I know that I don't have to fear anymore? Because my dad said, you don't have to fear anymore. Somebody said, and it might be more, it might be less, I don't know, but one of the most uh, uh, quoted promises in the Bible is that I don't have to fear. Fear not. Somebody said 365 times. I don't know if that's true or not. I hadn't looked it up. I hadn't gone through and counted them all, uh, the different ways he said, fear not. But I know he told me I don't have to fear. I know he told me that he was going to be with me. I know that he said that, that he was going to work all things uh, out for my good. I know that he said, if I confess my sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I know that's what my daddy said. So if that's what my daddy said, that's what I'm going to choose to believe. And if I can make a simple step like I did last week and like you did last week, if I can make a simple step and say, Father, I choose as an act of my will, not because I feel like it, not because I think I have the strength to do this of myself in and of myself, but because you said so, I choose to forgive those people. Then you can do the exact same thing today. God, I choose as an act of my will, not because I think I have it all together, not because I think I'm perfect, because I know, in fact, that I'm not, not because I think I've done everything right, because I know I haven't done everything right, but I know that I'm forgiven by you. And if I'm forgiven by you, then I'm forgiven. Amen. Because if he tells us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If he tells us that, is it true, church? Is it true? Is there any shadow of turning in God? Has he ever changed his mind on you? Has he ever promised you something that, that he didn't fulfill or that he wouldn't fulfill? Has he ever lied to you? Has he ever jerked the rug out from under you just for meanness sake? Or has he always been faithful? Has he always been faithful? Let me read you a few scriptures or, or, or I'm going to tell them to you and you can look some, some of them up and some of them we, we might uh, just, just read them. One of the first things, and, and I go back to, to the book of Joshua in the first chapter after Moses passes away. Joshua, the Lord tells Joshua because he thinks he can't, right? like a lot of you here this morning. I think I can't forgive myself. I think I can't measure up to what God wants me. And, and God's not looking for somebody who can, Right? He's looking for somebody who will believe what he says about them. He's not looking for a good person. He's not looking for the best one in here. He, as a matter of fact, might be, just might be, because I know him pretty well, he might be looking for the worst one in here, for the least one in here, for the one who doesn't have it all together, the one who has the least together. He just might be looking for that person to say, I want to put my glory in them. I want to put my power, let it rest on them. I want, to, I want to just see if they will just obey me and trust me and see what I can do with their life. He'll take the least and make them the greatest. He'll take the one that has the, the least and give them the most. He'll take the one who is not and he'll make them. So that they are. I come in here sometimes and Ken will be sitting here with some of the brothers and, 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 and I'll say, good morning, gentlemen. And Ken will say, thank you for the compliment because I called him gentlemen. And I say, well, I, I believe in calling things that are not as though they were. <laughs> kind of like the Lord. He looks at you, Dawson, and he says, that boy is not 
oh my goodness, he has so many shortcomings, so many flaws, so many faults. So many, uh, yeah, he's agreeing with me already. But you know what he also says about you? He says, I can pour my spirit in that boy. I can use him. And I can make him something that he's not. He could never do it on his own. You could never do it on. But God can do it because he decides to. Right? He can take what is not and make it something. He can take what is cast away and make it beautiful. He can take what's been discarded and trampled underfoot and put it on, on a high pinnacle to be revered. God can do that. And that's what he was telling Joshua. I'm going to, he, he, said, he said, don't fear. Don't fear. Be courageous. Be strong because I'm with you. And I'm not going to leave you, Joshua. You see, that's, that's how Joshua could walk with confidence. That's how I can walk with confidence. I step up here on this platform. I'm not a speaker. I'm not, I'm not one who has uh, all the right words to say and can get all of his thoughts together. And I can't even make a good outline if I'm trying to, to get together to make some thoughts. It just, it's just a jumbled up mess. But I know my daddy. And I know he loves me. And I know he's given me an order. He's given me a mandate. And he says, go do it. And I just say, yes, sir. I don't know how, God, you're going to do it. Do you have any idea? You don't because you don't know. You don't know me. Any idea how many Sunday mornings I wake up before anybody in the house and I go in there and I get on my face before the Lord and I say, God, I can't do this. And I've been doing this. Let me let me let me change that. He's been doing this for 27, almost 28 years. And I still, Lucas, say, God, I can't do this without you. God, I don't have this without you. Only you've got this, God. I don't have words. I don't have thoughts. I don't have, I don't have anything apart from you. And, and that's as far as the mully grubs go with me. That's the far as poor old pitiful me goes because I turn it around right there and I say, but God, you got it all. God, you can say whatever you want to say through me. God, you can do whatever you want to do by your power, by your might, with your strength, because of your will. You can do this. Your strength, as a matter of fact, the word tells me, is perfected in my weakness. Man, Dawson, that make you glad you're weak. It should, if you understand what that means. How many weak people we got out here where it comes to spiritual things? Oh, come on. Everybody needs to raise your hand. Everybody. If you didn't, you need to raise both hands for lying. <laughs> weak people spiritually. And so glad, so glad that his strength is perfected in my weakness. That he can take something so weak, so frail, so without, so cast aside, so forgotten and he can put his strength into it and perfect it and use it for his glory. Because that's what God wants to do in you. That's what he wants to, that's what he wants to say to you this morning. That you're not least. You're most because you're least. If that makes sense. That, that he wants you to think differently about yourself. Not, not like the world would have you think. You know, the world would have you think... Oh, you're special and you deserve and, and you're good and you're right and do what you want to do. Do what makes you feel good. Don't worry about them. Do what's right for you first and foremost and all this. And, 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 but his way is completely different. We know plenty of what the world says. We need to know a little more of what God says. So he tells Joshua, don't be afraid. Be strong. Be courageous. I am with you. It says, it says in Isaiah that I'm healed. I'm just going to read some highlights of my notes right here. It says in Isaiah that I'm healed, that he took the stripes for me. Am I going to believe I'm healed or, or am I going to believe I'm sick? Am I going to believe that I can, that, that I have the peace that he said that I could have, that he took the chastisement so that I could have the peace? Am I going to believe that or am I going to believe I have to stay uh, without peace? And, and being distraught and being worried and being fearful. Among hands of us are fearful too much of our lives. 
I should be able to walk into this place, walk into anywhere I go just with my head up and confidence and with a borderline cocky attitude. Not cocky, but just right on the verge of cocky because I know who I belong to. I know what he can do. I know what he causes to happen in me. I know what he brings about in me when I let him do it. And I just know he's going to do it. Right? Is anybody with me today? I, I, I see one or two of you are with me. I don't know where the rest of you are, but I, I, I wish you would get here and I wish you would start taking this to heart a little bit and start believing what daddy says, right? Amen. He says, I'm healed. Romans 8, 38 and 39. You can look this up later. Write yourself some notes. It says, I am forever loved. Forever, Connie, loved forever. That, that you'll never not be loved by Him. At the time you feel the least loved, you are the most loved. Because He's attracted to that kind of weakness, right? We've talked about that before, about how God is attracted to weakness. So, so you're at your weakest point. So you're all the way down. So you don't feel like you could get any lower than you are today. Guess what? You're in a good place. You are in a good place because my God is attracted to weakness. My God is on the scene. He loves you. You're one of his kids. And he loves you with an unfailing love. And, and just like he promised Joshua, he promises me, I will never leave you. You think I'm not there? I am here. I'm the one holding you up to keep you from going any further down. I'm the one whispering anything good in your ears right now. Because you have been listening to the devil over and over and over and he's relentless and he has beat you down. But I've said it at least a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more when I'm talking to you. The devil is a loser and a liar. Those are two really good qualities he has. He's a loser and a liar. He has lost the fight and he knows it. He lost when Jesus won on the cross and was resurrected. He lost. He has no power over you that you don't give to him. He, he, can't, he, can't, he can't put a lie and inject it into your life. He has to get you to believe it first. Does that make sense? The devil can't just come to you and say, say you, you're, you're worthless. And then all of a sudden you're worthless. He can't do that. He's got to get you to believe you're worthless before your worth starts to fade. He can't just come to you and say, nobody loves you, and that's a fact, Jack. Get used to it. Nobody loves you. You'll never be loved like you want to be loved. You'll always be a loner. He can't put that on you and it become reality. He can, he can throw it out there. He can whisper it. He can talk it. He can say it. He can even use other people to reinforce it. Over and over and over and over. More and more people to reinforce it. But he cannot make it become a reality. You have to do that. And it all depends on who you're going to believe. You're going to believe those friends that say you're ugly or your picture's ugly. Or are you going to believe what daddy says? You're going to believe those friends that say you're worthless or are you going to believe what daddy says when he says about you that his thoughts about you, Larry Fossbinder, are as numerous as the sands of the sea? Is that hard to believe? That his thoughts about you are as numerous as the sands of... Is it hard to believe that like it says in Zephaniah, I think 317, that he sings praise songs about you? You ever thought about it like that, church? <laughs> that just does me good. I mean, I just we just spent some time up here singing praise songs about him, but he he does that about us. He loves us that much. Isn't that good news? Amen. Is it good news to you that he says in Psalm 139 that you're fearfully and wonderfully made? That he knew you when you were in your mother's womb? If he knew you, let me do, this just occurred to me. If he knew you when you were in your mother's womb 
And He knows the beginning from the end. Did He know what weaknesses you would have? Did He know in advance what faults you would have? Did He know ahead of time what struggles you'd have and what thoughts you'd have on any given day? Did He know? Did he, did that, was that just happenstance? Does that just happen to occur that way? Or maybe is there a design, a grand design, a divine design? Maybe there's a plan. Maybe there's things in your life that he knew you with your spirit had. And so he decided to put your spirit in your body that was in your mama's belly to be born into the family you were born into, to live where you live, to endure what you endure, to perfect you and to establish you and to provide the pathway that you and only you needed, very unique to you, to be able to find your way to Him and to be able to be used the way He wanted you to be used to the others around you. You see, there are no accidents. There are no accidents. There are no mistakes. Not in people, not in life. There's a grand design. And God, as I said a few weeks ago, is in control of all of this mess. This beautiful, wonderful, messy thing we call life. You see, it's true what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, that you are a new creation. That old things have passed away. And all things have become new. Kenny, you're, you're a new creation. You love God? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. You ain't holding nothing back? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Thank you for being honest. When you get to the point that you love God with all your heart and you don't withhold anything from Him and you just pour it all out at His feet and you just say, God, I surrender it all to you. I'm tired of being the man I used to be. And that's for all of us, right? I'm tired of being the man I used to be. Make me new. He moves in your life. He forgives you of all your sins. And Psalms tells us that He cast them as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. That's, that's His part. Your part is to accept it. And when you accept it, He makes you new. He begins that work in you to make you completely new, head to toe, inside out, spiritual, soul, and body. He makes you new. That's His part. He's promised it in His Word. And as we've already discussed, that's in the book of Kings. Not one of His promises has ever failed. Not one has ever failed. And He promised that He would make you a new creation. He promised that old things would pass away and all things would become new. He needs you to believe that. He needs you to believe that. He needs you to accept it. And to know that it is more real. What He says about you in His Word is more real than anything that you feel or that you think or that's being whispered or that's being told to you anywhere else, what He says about you. That's why, church, it's so important to know what He says. Raise your hand if you could off, off the cuff, just like this, quote five scriptures that tell you what God thinks about you. There's one person. There's two people. There's three people. You need to know at least five things that relate in your life to what God thinks about you, what He says about you, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, that all things work together for your good, that not one of His promises have ever failed, that He will never leave you, He'll never forsake you, that greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. The list goes on and on and on. It won't be hard to find one because the Bible is replete with them. It is full of promises and things that God says how He feels about you. You need to know that. You need to know it. You need to get it down in your spirit and believe that 
Believe what daddy says before you believe what anything or anybody else says. And then learn to counter those lies from the enemy with the truth. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did right in Matthew chapter 5 when he said, or was it chapter 4 when he was taken up in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? And he said, Satan, get behind me. As it is written, even Jesus used the word as a weapon against the enemy. How much more, Chris, do you think you and I need to know what the word says and use it as a weapon against the enemy when I'm feeling downcast and, and put, put off and, 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 and without and lost and hopeless and fearful and all the things that we tend to feel? Absolutely. Absolutely. Distress, turmoil, persecution. If God is for us, who can be against us? Do you believe that, church? If God is for you, who could be against you? That's a rhetorical question with the answer, nothing or nobody is going is to prevent God from doing what He wants to do in your life. But you've got to believe Him. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to believe? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. For your word, I could say more, but enough has been said. We could do more, but you've done enough in us and for us and through us. It's up to every individual here in this place today, God, to hear what you have to say and to accept it and to believe it and to begin to, to say it and experience it and to embrace it and own it as you intended for us to, God. Because how else are we going to be able to walk out the things that we started last week or the week before or the week before? How else are we going to get through the week that you have set before us, God, if we don't know what you say about us, if we don't know what your uh, words and your thoughts are toward us? and what your directions are for us. So help us, God, to, to get this message, to get this word in our heart, and to know it like the back of our hand. We thank you, God, for the victory that you will bring to those, that for the newness that you will bring into the lives, the new creations, the, new, uh, the promises that will come to, to pass. Lord, the hope that you'll bring, the deliverance that you'll give, the fear that will be driven out all of the demonic forces that are fighting against your church and the families in them today, Lord, will be driven out and we will walk as the church you intended for us with our head held high, knowing who our dad is, knowing what he says about us, knowing that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody agree with that? Said, amen. amen. Church, it's absolutely vital that you get what I was talking to you about today. It is absolutely vital and that we spend, we waste not another day listening to the lies of the enemy. If you don't know what the Word says, get in it and find out. Find you somebody, a friend, a trusted friend, somebody that will, that will help you find the Scriptures and you, you write them down. You stick them on the refrigerator. You put them on the mirror of your car or whatever you do it's as a reminder to you. And, and there are Scriptures that are are pertinent to you and what you're going through right now. And, and, and undergird yourself with the Word, right? Be, be, have your loins girt about with truth. That's part of the armor uh, that, that we need around us is our loins girt about with the truth. What God says about me, my situation, and my family. Uh, I believe it was Abraham Lincoln back uh, during the Civil War sometime uh, when, when somebody asked him if they... I may get this quote a little bit off, but somebody asked him if uh, God was on his side in what he was doing as president. And he said, my concern is not if God is on my side, but if I am on his side, because he's always right. My concern is not if God is on my side. If God, if I can get you to agree with what I'm thinking and what, what I'm wanting and what I'm saying, but my concern is that I be on His side. My concern is that my heart touches His heart so that then I can see the miracles that He wants to bring into my life. Amen? All right. Love you guys. Anybody else? Anything to be said? I do have a couple of announcements.
I just asked myself that question. Did anything need to be said? Yes, I do have something to say. Um, I think we still need, I think we still need a couple of uh, workers for the nursery. If we had a couple more volunteers, people that want to volunteer for the nursery. We got plenty. Or we got plenty to fill the first. We had three to fill the spots that we had. Oh, we already had those spots filled. Great. If somebody wanted to volunteer, would you turn them away? No. Okay. You will not be turned away if you want to volunteer for the nursery to help in there. So uh, see Miss Connie about that. We have tentatively scheduled a fundraiser dinner uh, on September the 25th. And that we will have a dinner and exactly what that's going to look like. Uh, i got to get with the powers that be around here as far as dinners go. Uh, but we're going to have uh, the 25th uh, tentatively scheduled for the dinner for the fundraiser for Bob and Carol. That's yes. So we're not having it on the 25th. <laughs> can we, do it the we can do it the following weekend. So whatever that date is, it's October something. October 32nd. <laughs> September 32nd. <laughs> October 2nd. Who knows what that date is? But the first Sunday in October, show up here and we'll have a dinner and a fundraiser, okay? Um, also, um, let me see here. This week is a very special, somebody's having a very special day. They are turning 70 years old. Now that's way on up there. I, I am so far away from that, it's like I'm eons behind that. I'm only 60 something. But this, per, yeah, that's real far, real far. But this person is turning 70. And, and when I tell you who it is, I know y'all all going to want to stand up, embarrass him really good, and miss, get Miss Connie to lead us in singing Happy Birthday to Larry Fossbinder. <laughs> On Wednesday, right? Wednesday? All right. Y'all, let's sing Happy Birthday. Make it as pretty or as... <laughs> however you want to make it, right? Happy Birthday! Woo! <laughs> 